Hello, hello, welcome back to the lab. Today could be a short video or it could be a long one. To be honest, I'm not really sure what it's gonna be and I, well, I think that's fine. <laughs> and the reason why is this. Well, basically we went to use the electronic load and what do we notice? Well, uh, it seems like for one reason or another, two of the channels are no longer able to report uh, voltage or current. They're still controlled fine, but I've got a feeling that some of those nasty miso bugs are coming back to haunt us. So let's debug this together and figure out what's happening. Now, as a first debugging step, it has been a few weeks since the error was last observed. So we ought to take a moment and just try to duplicate what we thought we saw. Or boot up the electronic load. Is that? That seems pretty good. All right, so we're booted up. Don't have any USB going on. I'm gonna take a moment. And set this down to something small. Volt or so. Two volts. All right, we've got three channels now connected with a volt. You know what? Uh, let's peel off that display film. Okay. So, what do we expect? Um, I'm not exactly sure. But let's come in here and let's set the current to one tenth of an amp. We'll hit run. Measuring two volts. That is correct about 0.1 amp, that's on channel one. Good. Okay. Seems like this one is working correctly. Set it to an amp. That appears to be correct as well. At least, that's close. Okay, we're gonna go to the next channel. Let's go for the same amp. Now we're pulling the current, but it shows a much, it, it shows zero, so we're not getting anything back on channel two. Uh, turning it off makes it behave as expected. Channel three. Okay, now this one is measuring correctly. Sweet. Okay. Channel four is not measuring correctly. So that's channel one, two, three, and four. One and three appear to be working. Two and four appear to be not working. Oh, actually, wait a minute. Channel four is not connected to anything. Um, connecting it to voltage would probably help it work, huh? Hey, okay, so current measurement is working, but not voltage on channel four. That's pretty weird. Um, okay, so it could be the miso line being weird. It could actually be the daughter cards. Um, yeah, let's think about this for a moment. And just try to wrap our head around this. Okay, I've got a the schematic pulled up. I don't know if you can see it, but I've got the schematic pulled up. And... Basically what I want to see is if there's some correlation between channel 1, 3, 2, and 4. And it looks like um, channel 1 and 3 are on SPY 1, and channel 2 and 4 are on SPY 2. So that's kind of leading us to the SPY 2 MOSI line. So let's compare the SPY1, uh, sorry, uh, MISO, the SPY1 master in line, and, and the clock while we're at it. So we're just going to take a look at the serial bus, and I'm hoping we have some kind of revelation about why two channels do not work while the other two do. We're on to something here. Uh, so uh, I'm looking at the scope, specifically the MISO line, and 
Um, I've got a feeling it has to do with our pull-up on Miso. Um, so, what I did is I took a look at the line down here. You can see our logic level. It's bouncing between two states, but they're both really low voltages. And then I checked out up here. You can see we're coming all the way back up to 3.3 volts. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at our reworks and just see if there's something obvious there. I feel like I had a good idea. <laughs> and it's not like the most, it's not like the craziest idea or anything, but it's basically just coming down to a, let's try to find the real sources of error. Now, I don't know how this is gonna uh, edit down. I don't know if we're gonna leave this longer format or shorter form. Pulled the, the daughter card out, so now it's a jar. I see a diode. Mm. Okay, well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to try to power this back on. One of the daughter cards. Yeah. It makes me so uncomfortable when that burst of bubbly nonsense comes out. Okay. Um. What do you see? Ooh. Hey. Look at that. So I removed daughter card three, and now daughter card four seems to be behaving correctly. That's a sign. So it looks like we might have a fault in daughter card three. Um, let's quick, uh, uh, yeah, let's do the thing. Let's test the, oh wait, no, 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 wait. I, don't, I do have another daughter card. Oh wait, no, we blew it up. Ah, oh, still haven't gotten those fets. Uh, daughter card four is now connected. We have wired in the power supply. Okay. So it appears to be not functioning. It's not great. like everything's fine. Okay, let's check out our spy signals. This should be the master in slave output. Oh, but this is at the daughter card. So this is before the diode. Now, if I come back mmm well there it is a wire literally just I touched it and it came off I bet it's that wire so basically I was poking around in here and I'm like what's what's going on and I touched this gray wire and it just yeah that wasn't a very good solder joint there eh so, uh, I'm gonna try to solder that back in. Hopefully everything comes to life. The master input for the micro was basically floating sometimes. I think that could be a very probable root cause for the issue. 0.21 amps on channel four. Here we go with the leads. And we're going to channel four. Negative to negative, positive to positive. Hey, so we're getting 1.9 volts, 0 0.21 amps on channel four. And now stop that, we'll go over to channel two. Channel two is now working. So we had a cold solder joint on MISO. 
Yes, yeah, so this is a little bit more of an informal video. I just really wanted to share this process with you. And we've got a lot of content coming up that is going to be pretty great, right? We've got the community edition coming up. We've got a few debug and analysis. And it just didn't feel right to press on with this project. So basically, I just didn't feel comfortable moving forward with thermal testing and yada, yada, yada without this system working as intended. Like, if I'm just using Channel 1 and Channel 3, yeah, I could probably get away with that without really talking to you guys about it. But it wouldn't feel right, and I wouldn't really like that. So, we did a lot of good debug today. I'm loving where we're at. And as a sign of how strongly I feel this is going, or how well I think this might work, I'm just going to pull our debug USB cable right out of the system. Because I've got a small suspicion that we won't be flashing firmware anytime soon. Hey, um, well, I better find some wood and like knock on it after I say that, because those are some bold words, but I'm really happy with the performance of the system and I can't wait to see what happens. We gotta do the fault tolerance, that's coming up soon. We gotta do community edition updates and a few other little things. And a really fun video coming up about thermal optimization. Thank you to Tom Nardi, by the way. I uh, wrote an article about this project on the Hack Today. Uh, I'll link that down in the description. It's pretty cool to see first time something like that's happened to us. And uh, yeah, I just really appreciate any of you, right? Watching, commenting, whatever it is that you do to support the channel. Patreon members, especially. Maybe channel memberships soon. Uh, things are happening and I'm really excited to keep you in the loop of what's going on at EE for everyone. All right. That's enough for one day. Glad we got this fixed. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you see the next one. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. So thank you for watching EU for everyone, and thanks for staying till the end. Bye!